system. For information that matter, for the record, with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio K Man. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. I'm your host, Orit Connor, and in the studio with me this morning is Councillor Al Suku, an MLA for the District of Borden Town. We were expecting Minister Osborne Borden as well, but I'm told that he's on his way back uh, from the BRAC. He was over there on the weekend for a function, so unfortunately, uh, he won't be with us. So uh, Al is in the hot seat, and I'll try to divert some of the questions away from him that we had prepared um, for the minister, and of course, we will save them to uh, present him with them at another uh, of our shows. I want to remind you, our listening audience, that you we have a toll-free number that we can be reached on. That toll-free number is 1-800-534-8255. And those of uh, you who are, are regular listeners and callers know that number by now. Also, the, another number is 949-8037. One more number is 949-6990. You can also email us at for the record, one word, for the record, at C-A-N-D-W dot K-Y. There is always someone standing by to take your calls, and we have our phone lines open at this point in time in the event that you want to call. If you have any questions of Mr. Suku, if you have any observations, we're going to go right into talking about the district of Bodentown. Of course, we say on this show that we want to hear the good as well as the bad. We want to hear what people's expectations are. We know what you were promised in terms of your districts and what you know can be achieved in your districts. As we pointed out earlier, the budget has now been passed and tomorrow will be the first day of that new budget coming into effect, which means that the funds, not necessarily the funds will be available, but that is when we can start to utilize the funds that have been earmarked for the 2014-2015 budget. Uh, Mr. Suku, Councillor Suku, you started out telling us about, you know, what you do in your district office in Bodentown and uh, the expectations that some of your uh, your constituents have in that district. Can you continue in that vein for us, please? Sure. Um, you know, and I'll continue to speak um, from the perspective of a new MLA, a new representative, because I still feel that, you know, after a year, there's so much left there to be to be learned, um, and I'm doing that on a daily basis and moving forward. But um, you know, the experience for me has been has been mixed because you you get a, a good um, sense of what needs to be done. And you understand, you know, from from a, the perspective of the constituents, you know, what the, the, the problems are in your district. Um, but then you're faced with the frustration sometimes of, you know, not being able to get it done quickly enough because there's so many other priorities that you have to deal with. And, um, you know, that's the, the other thing that um, I don't think many of the, the public understand the way that we're set up to operate is that, you know, we operate a caucus which meets weekly. And cabinet also meets weekly, and the majority of, of items that are dealt with in caucus are then passed on to cabinet. So pretty much anything to do with you know decisions being made um, pass through our caucus meetings, and so we're heavily involved from that point of view as well in the national issues. You know from you know things that a district MLA may not ordinarily have to deal with. We actually do sit in caucus and discuss those things. So you do get pulled from. Um, item to item, um, and, and you get pulled away from your district from time to time uh, because you're you're representing the entire country. But going back to Borden Town in particular, you know, I wanted to be uh, on the ground in Borden Town. I wanted to be um, a, more a district MLA. I, I wasn't too concerned with being a minister uh, my first term because I want to to get to establish myself in Borden Town as someone who, you know, they can count on to, to resolve issues or, and work with them through issues. Um, even if you can't resolve everything, I, I realized that the, the district needed new leadership, it needed strong leadership, and it needed individuals who were going to be there through thick and thin. Um, you know, we've, we've, the district has, has endured a lot. Um, 
starting with Ivan, I can think back to how much damage Bontown sustained, and I still see houses there that are lying empty and damaged. Um, you know, right down to dealing with the the explosion in population um, and the, the, the demand and, and resources. I mean, we're going to have to look at the schools, um, see where we can actually improve the capacity of the schools. Um, if not, we're looking at another school in Barton Town pretty soon. And, um, you know, just the unemployment, dealing with the economy, the issues that, that were created by the, the downturn in the economy. There's a lot of unemployment in Barton Town. There are a lot of people who are unable to make ends meet. So I'm looking at, at those issues as well. Um, and, and they hit me at home every day because I'm sitting in that office and people come and talk to me about, you know, what they're going through. And I, I do pass those messages on. I do go to the government and say, look, guys, you know, we need housing assistance. And before I was elected, I would never have said something like that. But I've now seen the need for it. Um, I used to think it was just a vote buying um, proposal to go out and offer people money to fix their homes but when you see the state of some of the homes in Barton Town you understand why and these are people who cannot afford um, insurance they can't afford um, to, to, to do the repairs on their homes so they're living in homes that are not fit for habitation and you know those sorts of things we have to take as a priority as well. And I must say that the political landscape is littered with former politicians who didn't heed the needs of their district mm -hmm. and only waited until when after nomination day sometimes mm -hmm. to go into the districts and start to talk to people and people recognize that they're only there to get uh, to seek their vote and then once the vote is obtained uh, then they forget about them so exactly. um, it is a good practice you know as a politician to make sure you stay in touch you know with your district because mm -hmm. uh they always say all politics is local it is it is and I, i've learned that quickly and um you know i shy away from from making statements like you know i want to be around forever <laughs> but i do want to be around long enough to to be instrumental in making some serious changes um, that are needed um you know and and the only way for me to survive politically is to make sure i do my job in the district and and I, I'm not ashamed to say that, that that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, I'm a district MLA. I'm not a minister yet. Um, so for for me, you know, the next three years is focusing on Borden Town and the needs of Borden Town. Um, I have to, I I really want to see a heightened level of um of of representation and 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 participation because I don't think that the constituents are involved enough in what we do as representatives. Um, you know, it, it's it. I've seen the, the, the other side of the coin as well where, you know, people say we don't see representatives except for election time. And then I also can challenge the constituents and say, but I want to see you more often as well. Mm -hmm. um, because some people believe that once they elect me and I'm in my, my office, that I must just go and do my business. But my business is dealing with their issues. So I need the participation. I need the constant contact from, from the constituents. I encourage it. You know, I, I gladly give out my phone number and my email address because I want people to contact me and I want people to come see me. Um, you know, you, you can't be a representative and, and not want to have contact and communication with the constituents that you represent. Um, that's a recipe for disaster. And I've seen, as you said, you know, <laughs> where others have made that mistake and, and I'm not prepared to do that. Um, speaking of uh, the district, uh, on the issue of waste management, the um, progressives in their manifesto also stated that uh, once a decision is made in relation to how waste management will be handled, that they will go to the people, tell them what they ha have arrived at, how they have arrived at it, uh, the reasons that, that they have come to those decisions. Would, will that involve um, having uh, town hall meetings to, to uh, keep people informed? And mm -hmm. also, I know that the promise has been made to the district of Bordentown that the dump, the mm -hmm. waste management facility, will not be um, placed in that district. How do you assure your um, constituents in that district that it won't happen? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, to answer the first question, yes, we do. Uh, we plan to, to have town hall meetings, and, and especially in, in Bordentown, we need to answer that question of, you know, why not Bordentown? But overall, I think when the solution um, is, is finalized and we know exactly what we're, we plan to do and how we plan to do it, 
then we have to go come back to the country and say, look, this is the plan, um, and and you know please, you know support it. Um, as far as as um, the decision to not have the dump, and I, I say dump, not waste management in Borden Town, <laughs> because in what was presented to me and what I saw was not waste management. Um, you know, we keep I keep hearing people say, well, you know, um, Dart was going to build a waste management facility in Borden Town. Why didn't you guys support it? But in reality, they were they were going to dig two pits that were lined, um, and that was it. And the, the 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 lifetime of those pits would have been, I think it was four years each. So basically, you're looking at uh, you know eight years, and you're looking for another solution. Um, there was no recycling. There was no waste of energy. Um, none of that was actually going to be provided. What was going to be provided was just the two big pits in the, that were lined, um, which we, when you, when you look at you know uh, value for 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 money and so on. That really wasn't a solution. Um, it definitely wasn't a long-term solution. So in the end, the government would have had to go now and and either negotiate with with Dart or someone else to complete the solution, or pay for it ourselves. So what we've decided to do is is not support that solution, that proposal at all, and go ahead and remediate on the current site. And and it can be done on the current site. And you know the minister will be providing more details on on the plans going forward. But I couldn't support what was being planned for Bottom Town because I just saw it as moving the problem from one location to the next. Seeking to establish sporting facilities in Savannah, Newlands area, uh, we, we know that in most districts, uh, and in particular in the district of Bottom Town, except for the playing field that is located behind, uh, next to the Civic Center and behind the police station, mm -hmm. that usually the school fields are used for you know sporting activities outside of school hours as well. What mm -hmm. are the plans there? Well, we've actually, I can actually say that we've done something um, in, in that area because the Savannah playing field is, has actually been modified. Um, it's fenced now and it is well lit. We've actually had lights installed. And um, the, the previous government had actually installed a, a track there um, for people, to, for the students to use um, for, for races and so forth. But now that entire field it has been fenced off and, and made more secure so that the public can start using it. And we've actually started to see a lot of people use that now in the, in the evenings to exercise and so on. And it's well lit and it's safe. So um, we've actually used the existing facility and improved it. And, and that's now available for the public to go and enjoy. Um, because we, we did recognize that Savannah, especially that area, needed um, more of a, of a, a facility where people can go and, and, you know, even if it's just to walk with your kids or spend time in the evening after work. But um, that is now available and, and open to the public. Um, we've also launched a, a boxing program um, in the evenings after, um, I think it starts at 6 o'clock at the Bottentown Civic Center. And so far, I've, I think there's about 15 young men who are who are using that facility and being trained there by by Coach Doney, um, and I went popped in there a few times to see them. They're do, do, they're really progressing. They're starting to to hone up their boxing skills and and you know just the level of discipline and that's required to be involved in a sport like boxing. Um, I've seen where it's making a huge difference on those young men. And you may need some boxers up there just in case they try to really bring the dump to bottom <laughs> well, down, yeah, right? I mean, need some fighters. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and what I want to do is really encourage competition between the districts. You know, we've, we've had the, I used to work out at the, the boxing gym in town um, with, the, with the guys there. And I know there's a, a lot of guys from different districts who come there and, and work out and, and train. And some of them were part of the national team, boxing team. Um, people like Tafari Banks who have gone so far in the sport and will continue to, to move forward. Um, he's in the Florida right now training, um, getting ready for another competition, and then he's looking, he's eyeing the Olympics. So, you know, I, I have no doubt that Tafari will be um, a professional boxer sometime in the near future. And we want to encourage, you know, if we didn't have this, this program, if we didn't have those facilities, um, he would have never recognized his talent. You know, and his, his mother will tell you, that you know, she was fearful of him going down the wrong path and getting into trouble and so on. Boxing has has completely changed his life and given him something very positive to focus on. And and I tell you, when I've watched him fight, and you know, I, I've been a, a boxing fan all my life, and the level of skill that I see him display and and some of the other guys that he he's that are on the team with him, it's amazing. Um, you know, there's no doubt that we have a couple of pro boxers coming up 
um, within that group. And what what I've said before on on this show also is that in in my day in the, in the in the sixties, fifties, and sixties. We had so many promising athletes here, mm-hmm. but uh, we didn't have the platform to launch exactly. them, you know, onto the international stage mm-hmm. um, or even the regional stage for that matter. I think uh, Goodman Powery actually uh, participated in um, activities in, over in Jamaica in terms of uh, track and field. Mm-hmm. But but we need more of that, which brings me into the other um, point in the. PPM's uh, the Progressives Manifesto, which was to continue to provide grant assistance to national sporting bodies for uh, technical sporting expertise. And when we looked at the 2014-2015 budget, we saw provisions in there for grants to national sporting bodies. Do you want to elaborate on that as well? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, uh, the ministry is going to continue supporting uh, the different organizations out there. Um, obviously, we we require that they have meet certain standards and that they adhere to certain um, priorities and so forth. But we, we're not heavy-handed in that and in, um, in telling them what to do. But we make sure that they they're curriculum or their agenda fits with what it is that we're trying to accomplish as well but the ministry has recognized from early on that you know the way to support the development of certain sports is is you know financial means if we can support um these organizations through grants um and, and they, in turn they help our athletes then you know that's a perfect situation for us because the government doesn't have to do it all um on our own and the, the added benefit is that if you have one organizing organizing body who is focused on that particular area, then you know they, they're experts in that area. Um, we don't have to have that expertise in house. So it's a, it's a way of delegating the responsibility and working, you know, as in cooperation with these organizations. Okay. And I think it really works. Um, you know, we've seen that again through boxing, swimming, um, track and field. You know, so we'll continue to do that. Oh, and football. You know, who could forget football? <laughs> <laughs> yes, as as far as summer programs are concerned, we see we see a lot of football camps that mm-hmm. are organized and, and everything else. For the district of Bodentown, and I know uh, in in my opening statement, I, I spoke about the challenges that some parents will find themselves in uh, now that school is out, if they don't have um, helpers or nannies to, to take care of their kids. Mm-hmm. Um, are you aware of some of the activities that will be in the district of Bodentown and whether or not some of them will be free or some of them will be at minimal cost? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, you know, I should have brought the list with me. We do have a list on the ministry website that lists all of the, the camps that are planned uh, for the summer. So I, I would encourage everyone to go on, on gov.ky, um, go to the sports ministry, and you'll see actually see that list there. Um, I, I really feel bad I didn't bring the list with me, but there's so many camps. Um, I know there's a football camp. Um, I think there's their plan for a, a basketball camp, and I've been talking to Bontown Primary uh, about maybe trying to organize something um, there for the summer. I have to actually get back to them this week and see if we can do something there as well, which would combine, you know, maybe some of the football and cricket and so on um, into a sports camp at, at, Bas- at Bontown Primary as well. But um, there's a there's a long list on the ministry website that people can get actually go to and 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 download and and see which ones their kids would fit into. So, folks, you heard that here on For the Record. For summer programs on the Ministry of Sports website, there is a list of the various camps that are taking place. And, um, Sisuku, can you repeat that uh, uh, website for me again, please? Sure, it's www.gov.ky. That's the government website. And then on there, you'll see um, sections where you can click on each ministry. And once you click on the, the sports ministry, then you should be able to see, find that list on there. Um, what I'll do is I'll provide that that URL to you um, so that you can repeat it on the show excellent, later excellent. on. Excellent. That, that would be great. So, folks, don't miss out on that. We don't want to hear you complain that there is nothing for your kids to do in the district, that they're bored. There, there will be lots of activities. We want you to take advantage of those. You're listening to For the Record. I'm your host, Orit Connor, also known as OC. My guest this morning is Councillor Al Suku and MLA for the District of Bodentown. We're talking about the District of Bodentown, what he's seeking to achieve in that district, his personal goals, his commitments to the district as well. You can call us on our toll-free number, 1-800-534-8255. We have about a 
another half an hour to go on the show. You can also call us at 949-8037 or you can email us at for the record, one word, for the record at C A N D W dot K Y. We're gonna go back to to sports again and let's talk about um athletic scholarships uh for young sports persons and again in the budget we we saw where not necessarily the younger ones but the established sports persons those who uh, per participate in our commonwealth games and the olympics mm -hmm. have been given uh funding um in in the budget as well yeah um you're, you're talking about the elite athlete program right. yes. yeah yeah, um, that again is a, a program that that um, the ministry created in order to aid those individuals who were, who were competing at that level, and who needed to dedicate more of their time to training and pre preparation, and you know it, it, it's very difficult for them to focus on working a, a nine to five job, and preparing to to compete at that level. So those those um assistance that assistance program was set up in order to help people like, like you know, the Frazier brothers and, and um, even Charles Whitaker, kind the of boxer for, for a time, to focus on their sport and developing um, their, their talent and their skill rather than having to worry about paying bills. Um, you know, and it, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't a fortune that was given to them. I can't remember the exact amount, but it was enough to get them by and, and you know, give them a little bit of relief so that they didn't have to worry too much about, um, you know, the financial aspect of, of you know, surviving in, in addition to training and preparing for their sport. So that program was very positive, and um, I've, I don't know the reasons why, but I know one of the Fraser brothers has um, decided that he wasn't going to continue. Um, so I'm going to encourage the minister now to, to, you know, pick someone else up and give them the opportunity um, and, and, and see if we can, you know, continue the program and continue the good that it's doing. As far as the district of Borden Town uh, goes, and this includes Savannah as well, as far, um, far as infrastructural needs are concerned, we have, we have the schools. We have um, mm -hmm. Savannah Primary. <coughs> we have Borden Town Primary. We have a, a community center in the Borden Town proper, but we don't have one in, in, in Savannah. Mm -hmm. um, we have launching ramps um, there. We have public beaches. So we see that a lot of the infrastructural needs of this district have been taken care of. And you spoke earlier about the personal needs of people and, and what you have seen since becoming a member of the Legislative Assembly and in particular a district representative in Borden Town. We have heard, uh, well we know that the Minister responsible for housing um, has embarked on new initiatives in terms of prov the provision of housing. And I know that one housing um, scheme in the district of Bordentown came in for some criticism because of some issues with access, mm -hmm. um, you know, with planning. Um, we've also seen people who have had their water and electricity um, disconnected because of non-payments, either because they don't have a job or they have fallen behind. So these seem to be some of the individual needs that need to be uh, have to be taken care of in mm -hmm. the district. At the same time, without running the risk of people feeling that they're uh, having that feeling of entitlement mm -hmm. and simply using this as a stopgap measure to assist them. Uh, can you can you comment on that, please? Yeah, I mean, I, I've it, it's a mixed bag because you know you do have the handful of people who may from time to time try to abuse the the public assistance programs. But I think you know overall, it's you know the need is genuine. Uh, people are suffering. People are unable to pay their bills. So what we have to do is is create the environment, the economic environment, where people can actually pay their bills. You know, make enough enough to support their families and 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 you know pay their mortgage or their rent. And, and the way to do that is to encourage development, encourage the establishment of businesses. Um, what the government has done in this budget you've seen is that you know we have reduced the, the, some of the fees that impact small businesses. Um, the, the reduction in, in fuel duty um, is coming in January. So we recognize that we have to, um, we have to make, reduce the cost of living 
reduce the impact to especially small businesses because small businesses are the largest employer of Caymanians. So we have to look after those businesses. Okay. Um, we, we have a caller so on the line, so we, I'm going to interrupt you there, and uh, we're going to take it. Caller, good morning, and welcome to For the Record. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Connor, and good morning, um, um, Mr. Suku. Morning. Good morning. Um, good morning. I, what I'm calling about is I would like to know why we do not have an old people home in Bordstown or retirement home, whatever we may want to call it. I am not just um, resting just on the shoulders of your government, no, but also uh, three, four, two, three, four governments before and now your government. Mm -hmm. um, this is a serious need in this district because so many of the elderly have gone to the pines in Georgetown. They have died here, and their families are from Bodtown, and they, um, the families many times have to hitch a ride to go down there to look for them. And sometimes, you know, even when rain weather, and it, it's been very, very inconvenient for us. Now, all the other districts have. Mm -hmm. um, East then have theirs. West Bay got theirs, Kibbutz Bragg got theirs, Georgetown has theirs. Um, I'm not sure about Bordtown, but I'm positive um, about Northside, but I'm very positive that there was one mm -hmm. set aside for Bordtown, and that is being utilized for other things, which has inconvenienced us up here, the elderly and the families who have to go visit them. Mm -hmm. I am looking forward for this government to please see that we get a retirement old people home in our district. Whatever you can do about that, I thank you, sir. Thanks for the call, uh, caller, and I'll have um, Councillor Suku respond. Yeah, I completely agree with that caller. Um, this is actually something that I was discussing the other day with Mr. Eden and, um, and, and Mr. Bond and Mr. Panton because we do recognize that we don't have that facility in Bond Town. And she is quite right. You know, your loved ones, um, especially at that stage in life, need to be close to you. And we do have families who have their, their, their um, grandparents or, you know, parents in, in the Pines. And it is difficult for them living in the district of Barton Town to, you know, stay in close contact with them. Um, we do have the Nurse Josie Center up there. That was, I think, originally that was the plan, um, but it hasn't developed as such. So that is one thing that we're looking at. Um, we'll also have to look at, you know, any other opportunities because um, the district is very large. So, you know, we're, but I definitely agree we have to have a facility in Barton Town um, in the near future as well. That big house there uh, next to the cemetery would have been a nice place would have to been nice, yeah. you know, and have a uh, other people enjoy that nice sea, oh, yeah. sea breeze coming <laughs> off the ocean there. Yeah, unfortunately, I hear the price tag for that is up to about ten million now. Wow! So it's um, I've actually been there, and that's a, that's um another facility that I was pushing to have um have them get it up and running because uh, I saw the the the, the potential um, for them to you know what I'm referring to is the White House, I think mm -hmm. is what they call it. Right. But um, as a, a very exclusive sort of um, resort where they would bus tourists in from, from um, the cruise ship and for them to spend a day in the district, mm -hmm. um, I then thought, okay, well, there's a huge opportunity for what another program or another project that I wanted us to get done in this term, which was the creation of a, 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 a heritage village um, in you know central Borden Town, so Cumber Avenue, that all that area there where you could actually have retail opportunities for people, um, little small restaurants, but keeping to the, the quaintness and, and, and the coziness of old Barton Town. Um, but uh, if you could actually have that stream of tourists coming in there, that would have worked perfectly for that plan. So And, th and there's also a tremendous amount of traffic, uh, tourist traffic mm -hmm. coming from um, the Reef and Moritz Tortuga Club. I, exactly. I mean, on, on, on a Sunday mm -hmm. morning, when we're cycling in that area, the number of cars that cross going the into town mm -hmm. with, the, with the rental license plates on, you know they're coming from there, heading to the airport. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're going, 
there and they're coming back as well so you yeah. can take advantage of that and, and what i found is that a lot of the people who if you visit more it's on an average weekend there's a lot of rental cars there a lot of tourists that are there um and they tend to be looking for a different experience mm-hmm. they're not looking for the seven mile beach experience so we have a huge opportunity in the eastern districts if we work together to um to create opportunities for the, for the people there to you know to become entrepreneurs and to become part of the tourism package that we offer so you would hold the, um or you would endorse then something like the go east initiative that oh, was yeah. that was started before mm-hmm. we um what we plan to do was um i won't call it go east but there we, we call it peace um program program of incentives for eastern um district entrepreneurs but it was basically a program where we would provide incentives for for people who own land who wanted to develop um, tourism or any other type of business in in Barton Town um, to encourage them to do so. Um, what I'd like to see is that you know not everyone has to leave Barton Town to go to work. You know we should live and work in a district that would be ideal for us because we're creating our own little mini economy there that will sustain the the residents of the district. So, you know, opportunities, opportunities like that, I, I will jump on. Um, and, and we haven't let that initiative fall away. Um, obviously, it, it, it went a little ways down the line in terms of um, priority because it's some of the things we had to deal with. But it's there now, things that in, in the second year that I want to actually push now and, and get high, high up on the agenda. I know that there are several years ago on the bypass road, government has property there and there were plans actually Phil had already been placed on the site where the pol- central police station was going to be relocated mm-hmm. there as well as um, a fire station. Are there any plans to utilize that uh, government property there for anything now? Um, currently, no. Um, we did have a short-term plan for it, but um, I'm not sure if that's going to happen yet. But for the um, the Heritage Park and the Mission House area, um, whenever we have events there, it's... Um, there's not insufficient parking plus you know coming through cumber avenue um that area there it it causes a lot of congestion so we were going to temporarily utilize it for parking and open up the back of of that facility so that you could actually access it through the back um there's a huge pond there so we would have to actually bridge that so that slowed us down a bit but um in terms of moving forward with that and to be honest i'm not aware of any plans yet um I'll, i'll ask the premier though if he if he um, could maybe update you on what the plans are for that um, in terms of moving a police station there or, or developing it. Um, for the time being, we were going to use it for, um, for parking because it is a, a, a huge piece of property that we could take advantage of. Yep, it's, it certainly is. Uh, mm-hmm. Folks, you're listening to For the Record. I'm your host, Orit Connor. My guest with me this morning is Councillor Al Suku, member of the Legislative Assembly, and district representative for the district of Bodden Town. We're talking mainly about Bodden Town, the activities in Bodden Town, his views of what he wants to uh, take place in Bodden Town, um, the the plans and the programs that he wants to have in place for his constituents in Bodden Town. Is there anything else that you want to um, highlight, uh, Mr. Suku? Well, just to talk about um, going back more to on a national focus, and, but it definitely has a bearing on Borden Town, is the um, work I've been doing with the NWDA, National Workforce Development Agency. Um, government created a task force um, in September, I think it was last year, and I was asked to chair it. And the focus was to look at the NWDA and see how the, the services and the operations of that that unit could be improved to, to better suit the needs of the of the unemployed and, and the people, the Caymanians who were looking to um, advance in their careers. Um, I'm proud to say that we've we've created quite a bit of change there and all positive. Um, one of the biggest things that's, that's come out of that now is that we now have online um, an interface for the immigration boards who can actually now, when they're sitting in their board meetings, deciding on work permits and so forth, um, they can actually have visibility of who, which Caymanians are available, in the um, who are maybe unemployed or looking to to move to another you know position, another career possibly, but you know primarily focused on the unemployed. So, if anyone who is unemployed goes in and registers with NWDA as as being unemployed, when immigration is deciding on a work permit, then and they say for example they have an application for a plumber, 
you they simply log into the interface um, and say, well, who do I have available? Which K-miners are available that can do this job? And if you're registered, you will pop up in that, that list. So instead of a permit being granted for a plumber, they will, you will get a call from the potential employer saying, look, would you come and interview? So at least we're, we're giving Caymanians the opportunity to be considered. Um, what was happening before, I understand, is that with so many um, agencies involved in the process but being disconnected, that people were actually not getting the opportunities. So, you know, I encourage, strongly encourage all the unemployed Caymanians to go and register um, because that is a, a huge opportunity for them. And and the key after that, of course, is the, the follow-up that you will get from the immigration boards in terms mm -hmm. of once you, you have connected an employer with a potential employee mm -hmm. to, to ensure that, that there is genuineness in in terms exactly. of the negotiations that are taking place there and they're not simply doing it for because they have to do it. Exactly. I'm told we have a, another caller on the line. Caller, good morning and welcome to For the Record. Yeah, good morning, uh, um, Mr. O'Connor, and good morning, Mr. Seku. Morning, morning, sir. Um, first, we would like to say, really, we appreciate Mr. Seku as an MLA. Even though he is not UDP, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I kind of but, expected you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think um, Mr. Saku has delivered the promises he gave, and I think we highly respect Mr. Saku as as myself and as others who support the UDP. We we really stand and respect Mr. Saku and delivering the promises that's what all what we want from the government deliver the promises they give but you see i think uh, one of the best families we have this term is mr saku i think he is doing a fantastic job i really always uh, observe and appreciate what he do and what he try to help people you know when somebody in the radio want a job he try to call and you know he give attention to everything and that is something we appreciate um my question today there's some in Boden town some shops being built by the previous government in the beach you, you know those small shops by next to uh, the on, gas station on the covid beach yeah I'm, right. I'm familiar with those and those shops really meant to help the boor Bowden Town uh, to open a business and start something like fish fry or whatever mm -hmm. business they want to do. But we hear there, there is some, some, a lot of issues being put to stop those, especially it is uh, next to a business of one of the ministers, uh, Mr. Uh, Bowden. And we hear there is a lot of blackout being put against those uh, uh, shops to open. What is Mr. Saku can do to give those business to the poor people to, to start something in life, especially the one not working in Bowdoin Town? There is a lot of uh, people not working in Bowdoin Town. Mm -hmm. My well, other thing is if I have, uh, if you can please, after the program, to give me a call, Mr. Um, Saku, there's a I think I can't speak about in the radio I want to speak to you about and let you know. Um, my phone number is 9393007. If okay. you can call me, please. Yep, I have your number saved, so I'll, um, I'll give you a call. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Uh, we'll have Mr. Suku uh, answer that. Your question in a minute. We're going to take another caller that we have online, and then, uh, then we can answer we can both. Ask. Yep. Caller, good morning, and welcome to For the Record. Good morning, Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Connor and Mr. Borden and Mr. Archer. Good, I, good morning, Mr. Borden isn't here, unfortunately. It's just Mr. Suku, Councillor Suku. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes, I would like to say, Mr. Connor, uh, if you could get in touch with Miss Evelyn Rocket. She had a graduation on Saturday night, and the kids was great. Okay. And okay. That needs to be. That's the best preschool that I ever seen in the island, and they did well. And I'm glad to hear that she, um, Evelyn, Evelyn is is a 
an asset to Bordentown. She um she's someone she worked with us recently on um when we did the Queen Baton um relay and, and you know, she basically organized that for us. Um she's very good with organizing, especially sporting events mm -hmm. and so on. So we plan to use her quite a bit, um, in the district. So <laughs> I hope she's prepared. But um yeah, she's and she, you know, the, the funny thing is she used to teach me in school. Wow. So, you know, it's a pleasure <laughs> for me to be able to work with her now. You know, I'm still learning from her. Okay, okay. I and Steve, you, the, the, you all need to go down there and visit the school because that preschool is great. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, caller, thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, Amjit's um, question in relation to the, the, the stores that are, uh, or the booths that are mm -hmm. on the public beach, Cowood Beach. Well, that, that's that been a, a bone of contention of mine because those those kiosks have been built and then just locked up. And, you know, I couldn't understand why. Um, when I took office, I actually started inquiring, you know, what's going on with these things. And the problem is, is that there was no usage policy um, in place for those kiosks and there was another issue where they were planning didn't approve them so it's a bit embarrassing because government actually built some kiosks that didn't have planning approval um so we've had to go work backwards now and resolve those issues and you know it's been quite a bit of time now and and i'm actually getting um a little bit frustrated but i understand that we have to go through the process okay. and that's what's taken so long it's not there's no objection from uh, minister Borden um with it being next to his his gas station or anything and um he certainly hasn't come to me with any of those types of concerns um and he's he's joined me in saying look it needs to be done and um, has anyone been assigned to to um sort of like guide the process now yeah um, well i'm working with the actual the, the chief officer in in that ministry in the planning ministry so he gives me updates from time to time and lets me know you know how things are progressing and i would expect that within it shouldn't take any more than another month or two to have that completely resolved mm -hmm. but i'll um we have caucus today so i'll bring that up with uh, minister tibbets and make sure that it's still high on the agenda but they have promised to get it resolved yeah. and um they're sort of having to being forced to work backwards to getting the planning approval in place and the usage policy done of course no one wants to think that government is being given special dispensation or consideration, but at the same time, it's the people of uh, Bodden Town of district, yeah, who are it. suffering and who, exactly. who need to, ha to have it done. So I would say that you, we really need to find some way to mm -hmm. expedite um, the process. You exactly. know, we know uh, that planning can be tough sometimes. And that is why sometimes I, um, and there are others who believe that in certain instances the government needs to be given priority or the government should be able to bypass certain mm -hmm. uh, requirements because it is for the public good. Yeah, and yeah. It, when it's for the public good, then either you have a way of fast-tracking it or mm -hmm. you allow the government to be able to make the decisions make the decision, and yeah. to, to stay as close to the guidelines as possible as far exactly. as planning is concerned. But people shouldn't you know, have to suffer uh, to wait, especially those people who are uh, looking for a job and want to mm -hmm. be able to do something. Yeah, and, and you have the, the individuals who, you know, they do go fishing, they do um, want to, to be productive members of society, and that's the perfect uh, um, outlet for them. And as you said earlier, the amount of tourist traffic passing that beach, um, there, there's many opportunities out there for, for Caymanians. So, yeah, I, I definitely have that on top of my district agenda um, to push um, and going into caucus today, I will definitely ask about it. Okay, and since I'm a voter in the district of Barton Town, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll keep pushing as well. We have another caller on the line. Caller, good morning and welcome to For the Record. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Connor and Mr. Saku. Um, I just I was listening to the conversation about the Porsche Hut and the public beach, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I'm sure that I can give some light to certain things that have taken place out there because I can safely say that there were strong objections from Mr. Barton and Mr. Dale um, Bart Martin's son regarding them went to the planning meeting where the emails were read and there were objections um, concerning those huts. Okay, putting that aside, mm -hmm. I must also say the hut is they, they're not in good um, condi working conditions. That yeah, I've noticed that. Believe me, I could not. For instance, me. I wanted to do 
my art so dear. And the kind of work that I do, I cannot take out there and I cannot leave it there. And in fact, I cannot be even bringing it back and forth if I was to take my work out there. Mm-hmm. And, and um, what, how I really feel about that project, I feel that it can be pushed some more. I mm-hmm. feel that feet are being dragged on it, and I don't see where that there is any problem of having to wait six months to a year to try to solve that situation. They're being locked up there, and um, a lot of residents inquire. And I do feel that, no, they were built by another government, but I do feel that this government can take the reins and do something about them. I think that they can. It's, I'm, I'm, I can't accept the excuse of anyone saying, well, their process, we have to go through and this and that. Yes, I agree. But how long does it take? It takes an email and a meeting. That's all it yeah. takes. I, I actually agree with you. Um, sometime, I think um, it was January or maybe a few months before that we were in the LA. And um, I raised the point in there um, to say, you know, that either we, we, we tear them down and forget about it or we try to get them open and, and, and serviceable and, and used by the public. I really think I agree with you that, you know, it, it's, take, it's been too long now and it's time for them to be, to be open. And besides that, I don't believe that anyone is going to try to to compete with the two gas stations. I don't think that was never the intention because I'm not going to get doing fried fish and fritters. Mm -hmm. Definitely no. And I never heard of anybody else doing it. So those two gas stations did object to it. I was in that planning meeting. That's why I can call and I can say so. Okay. But I am still looking forward because Arthur promised me when we came out that meeting, he said, Twyla, I'm, I'm I'm on board with you to push and get those going. Yep, and and, and no th- I'll be very fair. He, that has been any representation he's made to me since then. Um, he said we got to get this going. Um, and he's he's actually put it on my shoulders to say you know let's let you push for it and try to get get this thing resolved. So I give you my word. I will um I will push extra hard now and make sure that it happens. Thank you, caller. That's a very important point there and clarification in terms of the objections and uh, everything else. Um, the councillor has given his word that he will continue to push, uh, you know, for that. And uh, of course, you know, he is in the constituency office there. So you can always pop in there and find out what what the status of it is. Folks, we've reached the nine o'clock hour. And unfortunately, we have to leave you now, but I want to give Councillor Suku, the last word in terms of his observations and anything else that he wants to say to his constituents. Thank you. Well, I just want to say thank you and um, congratulations on the show. Um, I think it's a, an excellent show. And, you know, I do listen in the mornings when I do have the time. Thank you. Um, and I, I really do appreciate the opportunity. To, I haven't been on the radio in quite a while. So the opportunity to come now and, and, and talk about the things that we're working on and the things that I plan to do, be doing um, throughout the course of this next year. Um, again, this is all part and parcel of me being available and, and in touch with the uh, constituents. So I really do encourage these opportunities. And, um, you know, I encourage the listening public to, to support the show and, and, and to listen in and call in because... Um, you know, it's good to have a little competition in the morning as well. <laughs> so <laughs> I encourage that. And, you know, I'd, I'll be um, probably be appearing on both programs, but I, I look forward to coming back. And um, what I'd like to do is maybe come back with Minister Borden and we can talk a bit more about the ministry issues and the ministry stuff that we're doing um, as I get more in tune with what, what, what's happening um, in the ministry and, and what the priorities have to be for this year now. Um, and I'm sure he'll have a lot to say about waste management. Oh, yeah, I have all of his questions <laughs> set aside for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll leave him in the hot seat for that one. Um, but he's, he has it under control, and um, I have every confidence in him that, he, that you know, it will get resolved. Um, he knows what he has to do, um, and he's, he's battling with the criticism and, and so on right now, but um, I have a lot of faith in him and, and his abilities. So, Well, Councillor, thank you very much for being, you know, our guest this morning. I've uh, totally enjoyed the conversation with you, and I'm sure, based on the calls that we have received, that people have heard you, people have concerns, uh, we know what they are. 
Um, in closing, I'd like to say to you, the public, perform a random lack of kindness today if you can. Uh, we've talked about the um, summer programs that are taking place. If you know about one or two, you know, maybe get a box of uh, cupcakes or something and uh, take to one of those sites. Uh, there are needy kids out there. We need to be our brothers and our sisters um, keepers. There are more people uh, who are, there are people who are more or less fortunate than we are in our society and we need to help those. We are our brothers and our sisters keepers. So perform a random act of kindness, especially to our young people today who we all know are our future. Thank you for listening to the show. We will be back on Wednesday morning when we'll have the independent members, MLA Arden McLean from East End and MLA Ezard Miller from Northside. Goodbye and have a great day.